When you're shooting video on, say, a DSLR, you have a choice to make. Do you want to use an automatic setting or do you want to use the manual setting? Now, if you're just starting out making videos, it's probably a good idea to use the automatic setting because it's going to be pretty good. But once you start making more stuff and you're used to wanting to be able to edit things and tweak things in post, it's a lot easier if you are able to make the adjustments that you want by setting things to manual. Now, there are four things that we need to talk about that are kind of the core manual settings that you will need to tweak to kind of get the video that you want. First one is frame rate. That's going to be a real quick discussion. Then we have aperture, we have shutter speed, and we have ISO. Now, frame rate is pretty straightforward. What you're talking about is how many frames or still images do you want your video to have every second? And typically, that number is going to be either 24 or 30. 24 is something that you're very likely to see in films, and 30 is something that you're more likely to see in television programs. Now, it's difficult for me to actually demonstrate this to you through this video without ruining the quality of it when uploading, because you upload a video in a particular frame rate. And if I uploaded most of this in 24 and said, well, show it in 30, it's, it's going to look a little bit weird. One thing that is important to consider, though, is that if you think about it, your camera is taking pictures every 24 seconds, right? And it opens the lens, takes the picture, and closes it. Now, the amount of time that it has to do that is dependent on how many pictures it's trying to take in a certain amount of time. If you say 30 pictures every second, it means the camera has to open very quickly and, and, and the lens has to close off again really quickly. If you say 24, it has a little bit more time. What that means is that you can get more light into the lens. So if you shoot at 24, you don't need to have quite as much light as you need for 30. It's a small difference, but it can really be helpful. Next thing is aperture, or the F number, and this is basically telling the camera how wide open should the lens go for every picture that it takes. A low F number means that it goes very, very wide open for every shot. A high F number means that it opens only just a tiny little bit. What you'll notice, though, if you play around with this number, is that if the number is low, things that are out of focus are going to be very, very out of focus. Here's an example, I'm out of focus. But if you raise that number up, you're gonna get an even wider area that's in focus. I'm less blurry now. Now, just like we were talking about with frame rate, the aperture also has an effect on the brightness of your video. If you think about it, if the lens opens up a lot, there's a lot of light that can get in in a short period of time. If it opens up a tiny little bit, you have to have a lot more light for it to pick it up. So if you're dealing with light problems, you probably want to keep that aperture number, that f-stop, as low as possible. Next, we're gonna talk about shutter speed. And what this is, is basically how long should that shutter be open? Now, the number is tends to be something like 50 or 40 or 60 or whatever, but what it actually means is one over 50, because it's saying 1 50th of a second. So when you're dealing with high shutter speeds, you're actually dealing with a shorter amount of time that you're opening the shutter for light to get through. Now you can use shutter speed to determine how much motion blur there is. Let's take an example. Let's say we open the camera and somebody moves while that shutter is still open and then it closes. What you're going to see when you look at where that person was standing is a combination of the light that was there when they started and the light that was there after they moved. So let's take an example. I'll throw this Rubik's Cube up in the air and we will take one still frame and see how it looks. Now that was at a shutter speed of 50, which means that the shutter was open for 1 50th of a second. Let's try it again, but this time my shutter speed is 250, so 1 250th of a second. And finally, once more at 1 over 30. Now there are two things to keep in mind about shutter speed. One of them has to do with brightness, like with all of our settings. If the shutter is open for a short period of time, there's less light that's going to be able to get in there, so you're going to have to tweak your other settings to compensate. So if you can have a long shutter speed, so a lower number, you're gonna do better off lightwise. The second thing is that there's a pretty hard and fast rule about what your shutter speed should be, and that is it should be double what your frame rate is. So if your frame rate is 30 frames a second, then your shutter speed should be one over 60, and if it's 24, then it should be as close to 48 as you can, which on a DSLR is typically 50 frames a second. Now, you can play around with this, and you may get weird, funny looks, but typically you want to stick with that, what's called the 180 degree rule. So leave it at double your frame rate and tweak the other setting. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is ISO, or ISO, and this is something that was used to describe film back when people were still using actual film to describe how sensitive that film was to a certain amount of light. And in the digital world, it's quite similar. The ISO number 
number has to do with how sensitive your camera should be to a certain amount of light. If you have a low ISO number, it's not going to be very sensitive, which is great if you have enough light. At a high number, it's going to fire off that it saw light, even if it only saw a tiny little bit. But there's a catch, because cameras work by having red, green, and blue sensors. If you bump that sensitivity up a lot, it could mean that all of a sudden the blue sensor decides to fire when the other two don't, and you're going to see a lot of weird color skew and just noise. Here's an example. My ISO has turned up as high as it can go, and I've had to adjust other settings to turn the brightness back down. But you'll see, if you look especially at the white areas, there's a lot of just random noise. The general rule is that you want to keep your ISO as low as possible, but sometimes you just don't have that option. If you need to tweak other settings that reduce the amount of light that gets to your camera, you need to bump that up a little bit and you're gonna end up with some unpleasant noise. So if you're shooting for YouTube, here are my recommendations. First off, pick a frame rate. You probably wanna go with 24. Once you've done that, double it and set the closest possible shutter speed. So for example, if it's 24, you're probably gonna end up with 50. Next, move on to that aperture number, that f-stop number. If you're struggling for light, you probably want to keep it as low as possible, but if you have a bunch of people that are different distances from the camera, they need to be in focus, bump that number up. And then finally, set the ISO as low as you can go without making things too dark. And then you will be set up entirely manually, and you'll be set to edit.